Welcome to the northwest corner of Washington State, better known as the West End. The West End is renowned for its tourism and natural beauty. Visitors from around the world travel to our little corner for the simple sight of it. On the North Olympic Peninsula, salmon are indigenous. They have been a vital source of food for wildlife and humans as well. So that is why I traveled to the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition for more information on salmon habitat restoration in the West End. My name is uh, Carl Chastain. I'm the executive director of the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition. Um, I'm the project manager, which means that uh, I put together all the projects, um, what they're going to be, when they're going to be. I work with the engineer to have the projects designed. I don't do the designs myself. I, I hire a contractor to do that, an engineer rather. So in a nutshell, I guess that pretty much covers it. I, I do <laughs> whatever, whenever. <laughs> Now, sometimes I'm out running an excavator, sometimes I'm throwing a fish around, and sometimes I'm filling out paperwork at the office, so it just kind of depends on the day. Well, the definition of habitat restoration is just to, to, to uh, I guess our intent there with habitat restoration is to re restore any degraded habitat, and that's it. I mean, so that is our focus, that's our plan. What we do is we just go in to find something that's been degraded, whether it's degraded by an activity of man or a natural event. The thing that you have to remember when dealing with salmon, and I think it's the most important thing, is that salmon is a keystone species. And what that means is, if that species is gone from the chain, everything else comes unraveled. Um, everything depends on it. The nutrients provide uh, food for bears and eagles and, and seagulls and hawks and, and coyotes and uh, cougars. The areas that apply um, to restoration of salmon are, are so broad. I mean, you would think that, oh, you do this and this and this. You, you do A and B and you get C. You know, you take the flour and, and the eggs and the milk and you put them together and you put them in the oven and you get cake. It's, it's not that simple. And some of the primary ones that I work with are uh, culvert, to, culvert to larger culvert arch or bridge uh, conversions, which we take an undersized culvert that's impassable to fish. Um, replace it with an appropriate size structure, whether it be a larger culvert, an arch, or a bridge. Um, that's that's one. Um, we put wood in the stream. The wood uh, it might be a wood starve system. It's really critical in wood starve systems, although wood can be put in any system. But the wood starves one, starve systems are more important that we address them. Um, the North Fork Clawa is a good one. It's a wood star system. Okay, so here we are at the North Fork Clawa. This is a project that uh, we we've done with. Uh, Forest Service, we being the Pacific Coast Salmon Coalition. Um, right here is a small section of, of the river that we did this year. Um, we've been working on this this river, this, this well, better than a mile of this river um, with Forest Service over the last 10 years. And uh, this one right here, we came in this year, um, we have a problem with the road, and so it, it gave us an initial reason to come in here and address this. But for us, it's it's about salmon habitat and what to restore those natural processes. I think what we find ourselves doing more than anything as we go along and do more and more with salmon habitat is we find ourselves mimicking nature. And that's what we try to do here. We try to mimic nature. We don't have the large buffers that would have naturally occurred. So, but... But historically, I think you would have seen more, um, more of the coniferous forests in here. We've seen spruce, we've seen cedar, um, maybe a little more vine and maple, which we have some vine maple in here. And, and there's some maple that occur in here naturally. And there's, there's a spruce, but it ain't going to be here for much longer. It's, it's going to hit the river. And then, and then it'll do what it, what it would do as its second life in, in the river. And that's to, to provide a function in the stream. It'll provide uh, bank protection, slow water refuge, uh, refuge for juvenile salmon, um, for predation. Uh, it helps reduce sediment input into the stream, helps uh, stabilize banks. It, it really kind of helps keep the river inside the river. Um, so that's what wood does. It, it has a tremendous function in the stream. We put in, and it's amazing too, how much wood you can put into the stream and it just eats it right up and, and anything from a complex of 50 to uh, 70 logs which I think we have 
I don't remember. I think we put about 60, 65 logs into this, this stream um, in this little stretch right here. But there are places along the river where we've only placed one, maybe two logs, and then they have, they have a huge impact. I mean, it's, it's, it's really amazing. Um, like we were talking about earlier, it's, when we first came in here, it was just like, it was like a road, just straight. There was no, there was no, it lacked the complexity that you would find, it, you know, naturally. There's just not a lot of wood. And so what we're trying to do here is, is just uh, mimic a natural event, put wood in, and, and then as a follow-up to that, we'll plant, which a Forest Service has done over here. Um, they planted spruce, they planted cedar, um, and so as those come up and those alder die off, um, new alder will come up, these, these spruce and, and, and cedar will come up and provide a whole new function in the stream. So that's, you know, as part of a, a huge process, a long process. It's not just throw a couple logs in, good job, let's go home. That's not the way it is. It's it's a long-term investment on a in a long-term resource. I mean, that's well with salmon recovery. That's what it's going to take a long-term commitment.